All right, so we're checking out the uh, BDF PV Pavo 25 V2. So I guess everyone is updating their tw uh, two and a half inch Cinewhips now, and this is uh, Beta FP's iteration. They had, you know, obviously I've reviewed the original um, Pavo 25 V1 a while back. They sent me the analog version here, although it does come in DJI, I think at a Vista or a Runcam link at the time. Uh, it's a totally different setup here. Um, basically, in a nutshell, upgraded the flight controller. It's an F7 now instead of an F405. The motor, I went from a 1404 to a 1505. I think it was 4500 kV before, now it's uh, 4600 kV on this one. And they went from, they switched back from the black back to the blue, the Beta FPV uh, colored theme. And um, this one they sent to me as a, uh, basically a kit. So it came with the motors installed uh, and the uh, flight controller, the F7 flight controller and the Express LRS receiver. And you can, and it, you know, basically add your own video transmitter system. So you can add your own analog, HD0, Waxnail, DJ03, etc. And you, it mounts to this bottom plate here. And you have, uh, I think, 25 millimeter and 20 millimeter screw holes to accommodate all the different types of video transmitters. And um, in my case here, I'm actually using a Runcam link here with the link antenna. And this is a Cadex Nebula. Um, pro camera I believe and uh, so I just I went with this one here you can't obviously go DJ 03 I you know have all my 03s in like lighter stuff so I figure might as well go with the um, uh, older V1 digital uh, system from DJI and I put an action 2 camera here on the mount and they have um, a new mount system here so before the HD camera was hard mounted to the carbon, which can lead to vibrations and jello. And now they have a soft mount here. It's uh, not super loose. It does provide some amount of uh, cushioning, but you know it, it isn't. It isn't like a ton. So I did fly this and in not too windy conditions, but a fair amount of wind, and I didn't get any jello in my action two here. Um, it was a little overcast that day, and I haven't had a really super sunny day to test this, so haven't really, you know, no, haven't had a chance to really see if there's gonna come gel is gonna come out on us on this one. But the tune in this one's really good because uh, I think uh, this has the 32-bit ESCs now instead of the Beale S before, uh, which had Blue Jay firmware. This is actually true 32-bit ESCs with RPM filter. They have it tuned really well. And you know, kind of, it's kind of interesting. Like every once in a while, I and I don't really fly a lot of the the uh, 32 BDCs that often because I don't. I, most of the stuff I fly is um, Blue Jay firmware. But yeah, when you switch from the 8 BDCs to the 32 BDCs, it just seems like no matter what it is, it's always if it's properly tuned, it always seems to fly better. It flies a lot smoother. So. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree with the upgrade there for something like this on a Cinewhip where you really need like high performance ESCs. They did a good job here on the tune. It's super smooth. Uh, when you look at the DVR footage, it almost looks as smooth as the stabilized footage coming from the Action 2. It, the tune is really that good. So they did, they did a really good job in the overall tune. So if you're looking for a nice stable Cinewhip that's going to have a good flight time, you get like uh, eight minutes on this 850. So they sent this as well as an H54S up to eight minutes. I think I flew it for like six minutes before I got tired and had plenty of battery left over at the end. Um, a few other things that they changed here is they've gone with the this little CNC part here. So you have two screws here and then a sc one screw here, which means that now you help, you only need to remove these four screws. You can take off this bottom plate here where the uh, VTX is attached to and the whole prop guard will come off as well. So you'll have access to the flight controller inside. And any, if you need to make a repair to the motor, very easy to do. Take these four screws off and then this will just pop off. That's also the way you're going to install your video transmitter um, on here when they do include the screws um, for installing that. So here's some of the leftover screws that I didn't use. Uh, they do include extra connectors. They have some instructions on how to Put, every, you know, put the thing together. Of course, you get your wiring diagrams very really important for the flight controller. And then I did not install the LEDs. So there is a small little plug right here. It's hard to see. It um, goes into 
this here, and then you wrap the LED and it has some adhesive, and it sticks on here all goes all the way around like so. Um, I'm not into extra weight on my Cinewhoops, so I did not install these, but if you go to the product page, um, they have different colors available, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, personally, I think LEDs on Cinewhoops are kind of dumb, but for whatever reason, um, manufacturers keep pumping them out because I guess people like them and buy them, so that's why they make them. Uh, you get two spares or two sets of props here. These are the Gemfan um, Bullnose three bladed uh, props, two and a half inch. But anyway, yeah, so they have these uh, CNC parts here. They're basically on each of these. So there's one here and one on the other side, and then you can't see, but there's there and on this side. And then they have these CNC parts here uh, for holding the battery strap. So I thought maybe I could swap this and put the this and uh, this side and this side and run the battery sideways, but uh, this middle part interferes with the um, camera mount, so maybe they didn't, I mean, it's possible you could do it, but maybe they didn't consider it in the design in terms of uh, allowing you to go either forward, backwards, or sideways in the battery. But I think basically the way, the way it's set up here with that camera mount there, you're pretty much limited to the battery going front to back. They do have the uh, X-T30 uh, mounted into the frame here, so you don't... You know, you need like a, a battery uh, plug from your battery to be able to sort of maneuver around and get in there. So uh, this one does work. It's a little on the short side, maybe a little, something a little bit longer would be better, but it does connect no problem. They put the uh, Express LRS receiver in the back here with the antenna. And um, the thing that, that they, it seems like the team that designed the Pavo 25V2 is the same team that designed the Pavo 25v1 because uh, they have put the USB port in a very tough spot to get to. So here you can see it. There it is. It is. You have to use a right angle adapter to get to that. Same here. But and 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 then you know there's the USB port there. Right there. It's kind of the camera's not focusing. And hard to get to. But you can't use a right angle adapter because it, this duct gets in the way. So you have to basically take a uh, micro USB cable and strip off the the shielding, the, the plastic covering, so it'll bend so you can get it in here and bend it enough to, to be able to plug it in. I was able to do that. I've done that. And I have I actually have a dedicated cable for that um, for this type of situation, but they don't include that in the packaging. So the reason I say that the same team designed this one as a V1 is because they had the same issue with the USB port being there, uh, whereas on the, the Pavo Pico and the Pavo uh, 20, they, they're using the, the, the little JST plugs that are on the flight controller and then they have an extension cable that goes to USB-C port that you can plug in and out. That would have been better on this, this design. So obviously they, there's a different team that designs those drones versus this one because they this team seems to like the micro USB ports that are very hard to get to. So something to keep in mind, not a, not a deal breaker because I have a lot of those little cables now to, to access get access to those harder to reach USB ports. But yeah, another sort of design, you know, thing that, that they probably could have done better on, but obviously they didn't fix it in the V2. All right, so this is how much everything weighs. Battery with the Action 2, it's 345 grams. So if you're looking for a sub 250 Cinewhoop, this uh, Pava 25 is not it as it is arranged. So, you know, obviously if you go with an O3, it's going to be, it's probably going to be closer to 250 with a, maybe the smaller battery. But let me, uh, let me just show you, let me just show you what it weighs with uh, the H54S. Uh, we're coming in at, uh, what is this, 283.7. Well, of course I have a little action two mount here. So it's closer to 250 here. So probably if you go with a 4S, 650 and you have the O3 air unit instead, you're probably going to be able to get around that 250 mark. So I didn't build that way, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure. And here it is. No battery, no action camera. We're coming in at 187.7. So obviously we're heavier now because we got the uh, much bigger 1505 motors now. All right, so I think it's going to cover for the uh, Pavo 25V2. I definitely like the PID tune on this one. Very nice, uh, flew super smooth, and the footage was really good. So if you want to see links to the footage in 4K uh, for the uh, Action 2, 
I'll link that in the video description because obviously uh, it's in lower resolution in the in this video here. Um, and also, I'll link. Uh, a, I'll actually put the DVR footage up as well as a separate video. You can watch that and tell me what you guys think in the comments below. That was it for this video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.